Welcome back to the Backseat Startup Podcast, where we give unsolicited advice to strangers on the internet. Today, I'm joined by Jake Schuster, founder of Gemini Sports Analytics. Jake, thanks so much for being on the show. Luke, I am excited for this. This is the show where we give unsolicited advice to strangers on the internet. So we'll head over to Reddit and we'll find a question posed by a founder and we'll break it down. Perfect. Let's jump in. I posted in here once asking how to keep my engineers from getting poached and I got lit so badly on fire about not paying them enough. I deleted it and I've never gone on the page again. Oh man. Wow. Um, I'm, I have been banned. They're like, nobody gives a shit about your equity, you know? <laughs> It's just like, whoa. Yeah, equity in early stage is worth nothing. Don't even count on it. It was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> there are a mil- over a million users in here, which is a and wild. And you don't know, like, yeah. some of them are multiple time exiters. Some of them have no idea what they're talking about. You know. Exactly. Ooh, um, sorry, the equity for services could be one. Yeah. Pre-seed AI startup. Do you want to rock with this one? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's jump in. So I will read it for the sake of the listeners. All right, the title is Equity for Services. We are a pre-seed, pre-launch AI startup. I am releasing an AI app. It is already developed and complete. Our team and I believe we should not take shortcuts to cut corners with our brand, communication, and overall product onboarding experience. My co-founders and teammates are seasoned designers and brand directors, so we have all we have all the assets completed for product design, web design, pitch decks, and the whole nine yards. We want to hire additional third-party contractors but have no cash to spare. Is it really stupid to give them equity for the following services since we have very limited cash to spare? Our valuation is $3 million. One, we want to hire a web, de- web developer to create a beautiful landing page with animations, which we've designed already. It will cost between three dollars to $5,000. 3000 at a $3 million valuation, 0.1%. Um, obviously, this would dilute as uh, more co-founders come in. We have connections to cinematographers who would charge 10000 for a fully produced and beautiful commercial. Uh, 10000 at a $3 million, va- val- $3 million valuation would be about a third of a percent. Um, and then this is an edit from some comments. So let's, let's work with the top part first. So just on the face of that, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, so you have to do what you have to do. And if it gets you from A to B, it's worth every cent and probably much more. So um, I think the poster here is getting, as we tend to, way in the weeds on the details. And I think if you can find someone that you know has quality, I would have things contingent on results for sure. But if, if, if they can get what they need delivered, this is a fantastic solution. Now, depending on, on if someone in the situation has people lined up or not, I think one thing to be prepared for is that, you know, as with many things, uh, when you're running a company, people won't like the way you're doing things. They won't understand. Um, and that doesn't matter. So you might ask nine contractors before someone says yes. And, and all nine of those, uh, you know, might, might be pissed off and that's completely fine. Um, I'm in the process of hiring someone right now for 20 hours a week that is going to make only stock for six months and they're going to do a great job on something that we need. So sometimes you have to do that. Um, and it never hurts to ask. I think 3 million valuation, um, especially if you have an app that is developed, um, is very low. Even in this market, I would, um, I would go on an uncapped safe and I would be somewhat stubborn on that. Um, you could even offer it just as stock options. Um, at your first price raise. Um, I think offering something at the same low valuation that your angel investors have come in at is, uh, is a little bit dangerous. Um, but all of that said, I, I don't think you should worry too much about giving up shares. I mean, I had early uh, advisors who I think would be the first to say that they're not contributing much at this stage anymore, but were absolutely essential for us going from zero to one that have a quarter of a point. And that's totally fine. It was absolutely worth it to us. So. Um, you have to get used to not having shame about not being able to afford certain things. Um, and again, if you can, um, if you can create something, especially if this is developing business for you, go for it. Um, in this specific case, just, just to dive a layer deeper, uh, it looked like marketing was a big one here. And, um, 
you could also have the payment contingent on um, business development results. So um, if, if the marketing is going to create a certain amount of income or revenue for you, um, give them a, a cut of that and give them a very healthy cut, you know, incentivize significantly. Um, and it's win-win. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think you touched on really two really important parts. Like there's a right way, quote unquote, right way to run a startup. And then there's the reality and startups are really messy. And um, so some things you just have to do to survive. And that's kind of the name of the game. So in terms of like, is this a good idea, good idea or not, it's more important if it gets you to the next inflection point. Um, there's certainly you have to be smart about it, you have to um, appro approach it strategically and, and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do to keep the doors open. So I think that's a really important part. And then it, it's interesting how they're connecting so much of like how much they would charge for contractors with the equity. Cause I don't think that's quite the, the comparison that they think it yeah. is. Um, yeah. First of all, uh, contractors are certainly not thinking about risk in the same way your investors are. So you you might come across some people who are you know risk seeking and want to jump in at the early stages and take that risk. But a lot of contractors, when they're just thinking about the dollars and cents coming in the door, uh, it might not equate to the exact dollar amount that you think it will in terms of equity. Um, just to, as an aside, we featured a company a while ago called Gusher. Our friends at Gusher do this for a living. They have a platform that connect you to service-based equity. Um, and that might be a good place to look because those people are actively in the market for exchanging services for um, for equity. And so there's certainly places to look rather than... Um, I mean, you certainly can just reach out to the contractors you have already identified and come into contact with, but it might be helpful to kind of start with ones that you already know are in this arena thinking about arrangements like that. So those were my first thoughts. Another good one is huddle.io. Yeah. Um, that's Mike and Mick. Shout out to my buddies there. Uh, we've been working with them for a year and a half now. Absolutely love everyone that we've worked with there. Um, and they have a similar model. Um, and... Yeah, another option you made me think of is pay later. So offer, you know, 1.25x, um, like kind of when you have the money or at a certain milestone, um, you know, and that could, that could be worked in as a cut of revenue. So don't think that it's straight just cash now or equity. You can always get creative. And, and I think it's really important for anyone in this position, Luke, to be unafraid to say no if someone's asking for terms that don't work for them. Yeah, that's... Exactly right. And it, it can be hard, right? Like when you're faced with limited options, it might be so tempting to jump at terms that you're not comfortable with. But and like we talked about earlier, sometimes you're forced to take those, but you you need to be really careful with a who you get in business with and be accepting terms that are contrary to what you want early on in the process. That's a pretty bad precedent moving forward that might you don't want to create any bottlenecks as you scale your company. Yeah, and I think it bears repeating. Um, pay upon results, um, you know, contingency, satisfaction. Uh, do not budge on those things. Um, you know, just like VCs are much better at negotiating terms than founders because they do it all day. Uh, vendors are going to be the same. Uh, so you know, do not do not budge on on ensuring that whatever you're getting from these partners um, is going to be what what is effective for you. And it sounds like you're actively doing service for equity right now. Did you do that through Huddle? Um, this one I just mentioned is not through Huddle. It's actually someone that we're interested in hiring uh, after our, our next big fundraise. And we just said, hey, do you want to do start part-time now? Um, and it's lucky just because this person is really interested in earning a lot of, of shares in the company. Um, so we gave him, gave him a way to do it. Um, but no, we have a, our, our UI UX designer um, that's been with us for probably about uh, eight months now. Um, is through Huddle, um, and we've we've used um, fractional front end design, uh, front end development. We've used uh, fractional data scientists through them, um, and uh, and it, it's you know they they have like I think every contractor in there I believe it has different kind of settings or preferences around how much they can work with shares and how much with cash, um, but there's something for everyone. I think it's a little different when you're going to a platform that specifically. Um kind of functions that in that facility. But outside of that, um, like the um, person you have on your team working for you now, how did those early conversations look around like a, a straight service for equity relationship? And I, I imagine it involves a little bit of pitching, uh, not too different from investors, getting them to buy into the vision to uh, feel confident that the work they're putting in is going to be worth something. 
One of the biggest and most annoying challenges I, I find I run into very frequently is not knowing when and how to flip the switch from I'm pitching you versus you're pitching me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think every founder has to back themselves to tick that box pretty quickly and, and then move into, well, here's what I need. Does that work for you? And, and you cannot let your time be wasted. You just can't. So I think you should communicate as early as possible what you're looking for. So this is actually someone that was a candidate for a role. Um, we realized that a different role might fit them better and we'll keep, keep going through the recruitment process. Um, and then we were talking about when they might be able to start. And I said, um, I'd rather not wait, you know, three months until we complete a price fundraise. Um, you know, would you be interested in starting right away? I know you're still on your current gig, winding down, his startup got acquired. Um, you know, would you work for up to six months, 20 hours a week for shares at this price? And he said, yeah, that, that, that sounds awesome. I told you I want shares, let's do it. So I think, not to sound repetitive here, but I think it's just about asking for what you want and being unafraid to do so quickly. And if someone says maybe, you can always, you know, keep one foot behind you and, and go back to telling your story. Yeah, really well said. That's that's the perfect way to frame it early on. And there there's so many people who are actively looking for side projects that it's it's a it's like almost foolish to not go after this market because there's so many highly qualified people who um, are interested in this sort of thing and getting involved at the early stages for equity. So um, it makes a ton of sense. And um, it sounds like you're uh, hiring rock stars, obviously, but it also is nice from the from the aspect of it doesn't lock you into like an employment agreement. And I know like it's not yeah, really locking when, um, you know, at will and everything, yeah. but it does let you be more intentional, intentional and kind of draw out that uh, forming your formal internal team discussion. So. Yeah, I think, I think there's a million different ways that you can try before you buy. And I think people should more often. And, you know, especially with culture fit and all those buzzwords, but you really touched on something there, Luke, where I'm probably going to get huddle in trouble for this, but there's so many people um, in the work from anywhere era who are not finding the need to work 40 hours a week to excel at their day jobs. And they probably don't want to be those crazy people who have two full-time jobs, but there's something in the middle that they're looking for. And there are a lot of people working in tech or big business, um, big corporate that have a cool 10 to 15 hours a week that they can offer to you. And they're probably... Uh, looking for something a little more exciting and different from their day to day. So go find those people. Yeah, I, I think there's a whole kind of culture of the startup curious, which are like they want to be a founder at some point and either like don't have an idea right now or they want to, you know, get a little bit of experience in a startup. And yeah. this is like the perfect, the yeah, this is the perfect situation for them. I mean, um, if you can spend some time in an early stage company, imagine how much better that sets you up when you're ready to start your own company down the line. So. Um, I, I, I love it. I, I think this is great. Do you have any final thoughts for this poster? Don't get taken advantage of. Know your value. Know what you want. Know that there are plenty of other vendors out there and plenty of people who can help you. And um, oh, sorry, I'm going to say something very mean to all vendors and partners. Um, <laughs> there's lots of groups that have big brands and have worked with big names and fancy websites, that doesn't mean that they're the best in the world. Um, you know, filter very intentionally um, and don't think that this is the only way to get to where you need to go. Very well said. Uh, you're welcome for the unsolicited advice poster. Jake, thanks so much for being on the show. How can listeners connect with you? Thank you, Luke. Um, so we are at GeminiSports.ai. Um, you can contact me at jake at geminisports.ai um, and we are at gemini under, underscore sports on Twitter and I am personally on there at coolhandjakegs and that's not because I think I am cool, it's because I'm a huge Paul Newman fan and that was my favorite film, Cool Hand Luke, and I made Twitter a million years ago. And can you tell, tell the audience a little bit about Gemini? Yeah, thanks. Um, so we're making it easier for sports executives to make data-driven decisions. We're kind of like Moneyball in a box um, where everyone's doing the data thing now, um, but we're trying to bring um, you know, coding-free application interfaces to the people who make the big decisions the teams on what players they should buy and what trades they should make and what tactics to play and how to keep their athletes healthy and performing. Um, so we're a team of people that worked in the elite sports world for a long time, and we're just trying to build products that we wish we had. 
Amazing. Gemini Sports was just featured by Startup Founder Daily, so go check that out and go check out all of the uh, social handles and websites that Jake just mentioned. Jake is an uh, amazing guy, and they're build, doing such great work over at Gemini. So once again, thank you so much for being on the show, and we'll talk soon. Luke, I'm a humongous fan of everything you're doing at Startup Founder Daily. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Talk soon. Have a good one. The Backseat Startup Podcast is brought to you by Startup Founder Daily, a media company focused on early stage companies. To learn more or apply to be featured for free, head over to startupfounderdaily.com. You can find the link in the description below.